What up, what up? Wimbush here, and in this part, we're gonna show you how to build out the campfire using X Particles. And recently, X Particles just updated with a bunch of presets. So that's pretty exciting because it gives us a good starting point. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And so I have my scene built out here. It doesn't look great yet because I didn't light it, but I have a couple of mega scans in here. I have some brush, I have some twigs, and then I have a, a rock formation back here. And if you have mega scans, you can follow along. These are the assets that I'm using. So I have the Icelandic rock, I have the dry plant set, and then I have the twigs down here. So if you want to follow along, I'm just using those three assets there. And if you wanna know how to texture those, because this one I'm gonna strictly just focus on X particles, and then the next one we're gonna do compositing. But for texturing, I have a couple of videos already. Like I have this one right here, texture and mega scan plans for Redshift, and then how to make it go faster using sprites. And then I also have this in part one of my Creek series. This shows you how to texture everything in mega scans as well. So I'll leave those links in the descriptions. But if you want to know how to texture your objects, make sure you check those videos out there. So let's get started with this campfire. I have my scene already built here. Like I said, we just have the rock formation and then our debris pile. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a new project file strictly for my fire. Now, if I come up to X particles, you see that we have a new menu here called quick tools. And this is strictly with the new update for X particles. So if you look, we have, um, you know, fireworks, we have rain, we have this one I'm most excited about, the fluid body. But for now, we're gonna go over some of the fire and we actually have one here called campfire. So let's click on this one, look at our viewport and let's just click play. And you can see right off the bat, we already have a good starting point for our, our campfire in which I'm just gonna go by all the defaults. Like if you wanna know more about what the different attributes hold, like if I click on my fuel emitter here that they have already set up, click on the flame, you can kind of see all the attributes that you're using. And then if you click on this little icon here, the, um, that little movie icon, it would actually take you to the Sidium site where they explain in video format even further what each of those attributes do. So that's pretty helpful there. But for this video, we're just gonna keep everything at default. I'm gonna make my timeline like 300. And then I actually wanna make this scene, I like rendering at 60 frames per second. So I'm gonna go to my render settings, hit um, output, let's do 60 for frame rate here. And then I also need to go to my project settings and under FPS, make it 60 here as well. So now we're working at 60 frames per second I jump my timeline up to 600. I just want to have it at like 300 frames. That should be suffice. And it looks like we're all good to go. So now we're going to have to export this as a open VDB file. And so in order to do that, we're going to come up to X particles, come down to, I want to say, yeah, other objects and then XP cache. Now in this menu, you want to click on your objects tab you want to come down to EFX format and make sure this is on open VDB. And now you'll want to select your folder here. And I have it already set up to cache, but let me make a specific folder. So this is on my SSD drive. I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to just name this one campfire. There we go. Click OK. And it looks like we're all good to go. Like I said, I'm just gonna use the default settings here. If you wanna make it um, a little bit more defined under voxel size, I believe if you go lower, that's gonna make your fire a little bit more defined. But for time's sake, I'm gonna leave it at the default eight because this is gonna export a lot faster. So let me go under my XP cache. Let me build my cache. And as you can see, it's going pretty fast there. And so what I'm gonna do from here is take this cache file we're gonna go back to our other scene and we're gonna make a volume for um, Redshift. And then from there, we'll be able to have our campfire be a part of our scene. So we only have a couple more seconds here to go. 
There we go. 80. I'll actually speed this up in the video, I guess. But there we go. All right, we're good. So let's go back to our campfire scene. And we're going to go over to Redshift. Come down to our objects. And then you want to Redshift volume. And then in our volume, we're going to want to put our open VDB files that we just created. So if I go back to my cache, click campfire, it's going to give you several folders here. You want the one that says fire, explosion FX fire. And then you'll see our VDB files are in here and you can't confuse it. Like if you go to fuel, it's going to give us XPC files, same thing with sparks. So it's the only folder that has VDB files. So I'm going to click on the very first one, click open. Um, I'm going to click no, because I don't want to create a copy. And then there we go. So now we want to click in animation, go to mode and click simple and hit detect frames. And in our frame rate, I want to change it to 60, but you know, work in whatever you're working in. I want to make sure my project file. Yeah, I'm already in 60 here. So yeah, you hit the tech frames and it tells us that we have 300 VDB frames. So now let me back up because it's going to make a huge box. Yeah, so this is our volume box here. Oh, one more thing we want to do is in our display under volume, come under points and then select 100 points so that we can see our, our VDB files here. So that's our fire right there. And now we're going to have to make a material so that we can see that. But first, let's shrink our box down a little bit. So I'm going to come under coordinates. Let's say like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And then zoom in here a little bit. Let me click play. Okay, there's our box. So let me bring it up to where our campfire is. I think I'll probably do 0.15. Shrink it down a little bit. And then once we have our material on here, we'll be able to see it better to adjust it. But I just want to be able to see it in our scene. Okay, so now let's go back up to Redshift, come down to materials, and then add a volume. And it's going to come up with this black material. Let me drag this up so you can see it. So this is called RS Volume. And if I double click on that, now I have my material editor. I don't even need to go to my shader graph. I could just click on RS volume right here. And you'll see that we have these um, arrows come up on the right hand side. So under channel, and you can experiment with these if you want. So let's start with channel, redshift volume, just go to density. And then for my mission tag down here, let's go to volume and let's, let's say fuel. And then under my mission ramp right here, let me drag this up a little bit. So I have this called a mission remap and we have a bunch of defaults. If you click this down, you can see we actually get a tab called presets. So if I load my preset, I have a bunch of presets in here for my fire or whatever, you know, if you want to do something abstract. But let's start with um, flame one, see what this is going to look like. And so we want to put our material onto our redshift volume up here on the right hand side. And now we'll want to go to a render view. Let's see what this looks like. So you can see we have a little bit of fire in here and we're actually going to need to add a light. Let me shrink this down a little bit. To be able to properly see it, you're going to have to add some type of light. And so I like using dome lights. So I'm going to go over to Redshift, let me go over to Lights, click on Dome Light. There we go, like so. And then under my Dome Light, I want to click on Volume tab here. And under Contribution Scale, I want to bring this all the way up to 1. And now we're starting to see how our fire is properly emitting in our scene. Now we can see all the smoke and everything. So from here, it's pretty much just, you know, how we want to adjust it. So let's go back to our material editor. Let's say instead of our scatter cut here, instead of one, let's bring it down a little bit. 
that makes our fire our smoke a little bit more see-through here or if you don't even want smoke in your scene you can always go to instead of density you could change it over to fuel and now we have straight up fire like all over the scene here and let's drag this out whoops this scene's starting to get a little bit messy all right so let me click on my volume here let's move this over a tad bit we can always rotate it as well so this is all about just adjusting how you want your fire to be So basically, that's how we have our campfire. Let's scale it down a tad bit. Let's say 0.1, and then our Z is 0.1. See what that looks like. Maybe bring our Y up to 0.2 so it's a little bit taller. So yeah, that's starting to look cool. We can zoom in a little bit. Then for our dome light, we can actually light with HDR files. So if I go into general and then let me go into my my um, Adobe browser. And let's say I want to use this HDR file here, this table mountain. Let me click and drag that into path. Click no. And this is going to light our scene using the HDR map. So you can see it's starting to look pretty cool there. So from here, you just want to render it out. You know, I like rendering out as an EXR file. And if you want to solo out your fire here, in case you want to composite it in like Nuke or After Effects, what you could do is come over to Redshift and then go over to AOV Manager. And if you scroll down to where it says Volume Fog Emission, and then give it a second to render, you'll see your box is rendering. But under beauty, you'll actually get a tag for volume fog emission. And now our, our fire is soloed out. So if we wanted to bring this into After Effects, you know, add some glow to it, add some heat distortion, we have that going on there. So I'm going to do a couple of more things here. I like to, let me, I'm going to add a null. Or not a null. I want to add a, um, external compositing tag to my brush and then same thing with my sticks so when i bring it in the after effects it's going to show me the position in case i want to add you know some type of 2d elements or anything in after effects here so let me see let me get ready for rendering i already have everything set up so i have it set up as a open exr make sure you click on your alpha channel and then same thing for my multi-pass. I'm gonna just do open EXR down here in compositing settings. Change, you know, click everything on for After Effects. Under Redshift, under my GI, I'm gonna go to Brute Force, and then my secondary, and use the Radiance Point Cloud. And I should be good to go. You know, you can change your, your min max here for your sampling, anything you want. I'm gonna just do like 128 by 256. And then, yeah, we should be good to go. And so that's it for part one here. Hopefully that helped you guys out. You know, showing you guys how to make some fire in here. And then in part two, we're gonna have some fun in After Effects, use some of the Sapphire plugins, you know, really do this thing up. So make sure you guys look in the description below and click off for link two, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, keep creating.